Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel, and today we'll take a quick look at motor nameplates by way of a series of illustrated example problems. This lecture operates under the assumption the viewers watch the motor nameplates lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Interpreting electrical and mechanical data on a motor nameplate necessitates active participation on your part. As such, I'm asking you to please pause the lecture when asked to do so and attempt the example problems on your own. If your answers don't match those illustrated, feel free to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made. As you're no doubt aware, a motor nameplate is in effect a mini data sheet fixed to a motor in question, describing its most important electrical and mechanical characteristics at the rated condition, a single point on its larger operational curve. Today, we'll take a quick look at a pair of example motor nameplates and put your understanding of motor nameplates, electrical power, inrush, and rotating mechanical power calculations to the test. First up, see if you can identify the manufacturer, model, and serial number for this example motor nameplate. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following data. It looks like this motor was manufactured by Baldor. The model number seems to be this string of nonsense right here. I expect this means something to the right people at Baldor. Lastly, it looks like the serial number is this string of nonsense right here. Manufacturer, model, and serial number information are important entries when ordering parts, downloading data sheets, or conducting warranty repair or replacement. Let's check out the electrical characteristics next. See if you can determine that this motor's phase, frequency, voltage, current, power factor, efficiency, and inrush code. Once we've got this data, we'll perform some calculations in a follow-on exercise. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following data. It looks like this is a three-phase motor intended to operate at 60 hertz. It appears to be a dual voltage motor in that it can operate at 230 volts in the low voltage configuration and 460 volts in the high voltage configuration. While in the low voltage configuration, it appears to draw a phenomenal 58 amps when operated at the rated condition, whereas while in the high voltage configuration, it appears to draw only 29 amps when operated at the rated condition. When at the rated condition, appears to have a power factor of 0.86. Additionally, it operates at 93.6% efficiency. The inrush code appears to be G. While we've got the electrical data right in front of us, let's see if we can perform some basic electrical calculations. First, see if you can determine the apparent power in units of volt amperes and real power input in units of watts drawn by this motor when operated at the rated condition. Let's do for the high voltage configuration. Since this is the first example, here's the pertinent formulas you'll need parent power in units of volt amperes in a three-phase AC system is equal to square root 3 times line-to-line -line voltage times line current. Real power input in units of watts is equal to apparent power times power factor. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should obtain the following data. Substituting our given values into the apparent power formula demonstrates apparent power input equals 23,105.6 volt amperes, or more appropriately, 23.1 kilovolt amperes. Substituting our given values into the real power formula demonstrates real power input is equal to 19,870.8 watts, or more appropriately, 19.9 kilowatts. You note when experiencing the rated condition, the motor operates at 93.6% efficiency. An algebraic rearrangement of the efficiency formula solved for unknown output demonstrates output is equal to input times efficiency. Substituting our given values demonstrate this motor must be producing 18,599 watts, or more appropriately, 18.6 kilowatts. A unit conversion demonstrates 18.6 kilowatts is roughly equivalent to 25 horsepower, extremely close to the nameplate mechanical power of this motor. Let's now calculate the inrush experienced by this motor upon closure of a direct online full voltage starter. Let's do so for the high voltage configuration. An inrush code of G represents the constant of 5.6 to 6.29. So let's say for center of mass and say it's equivalent to 5.945. One can estimate inrush current by using the inrush or kilovolt ampere per horsepower code in this calculation. Inrush equals the code constant times the motor horsepower divided by rated voltage times 577. Substituting these values into this equation means one would expect to see an inrush of a phenomenal 186.4 amps in the high voltage configuration. Luckily, the search doesn't last for long. I believe we've thoroughly examined the electrical aspects of this motor. Let's take a quick look at some of its mechanical characteristics, some of which we've already noted. 
See if you can determine the rated power units of both horsepower and watts, the rated speed, the design, the frame, and the type of enclosure. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following data. It looks like this is a 25 horsepower motor that operates at a rated speed of 1750 RPM. A unit conversion demonstrates 25 horsepower is roughly equivalent to 18.7 kilowatts. Looks like this is a NEMA Design B general purpose induction motor, which means it has a characteristic speed torque curve that looks something like this. At the rate of condition, the motor turns at the rated speed and produces its rated torque. At less than the rate of condition, the motor will speed up. At more than the rate of condition, the motor will slow down. Anything to the right of the rate of condition is an underload. Anything to the left is an overload and isn't meant to be sustained for any length of time. NEMA Design B motors are general purpose induction motors, whereas NEMA Design D motors, in contrast, are for high torque, low speed applications. While we've got this data in front of us, what is the rate of torque? It's not specified in this particular motor nameplate, however, we can easily back calculate it. An algebraic manipulation of the mechanical power formula solving for unknown torque demonstrates that torque equals mechanical power times 9.55 divided by rotational speed. Substituting our given values, demonstrates this motor produces roughly 101.2 newton meters of torque at the rate of condition. Lastly, it looks like this motor has a NEMA 284T frame and has an OPSB enclosure, which stands for Open Slotted Band, which is Baldor's funny way of saying open drip proof motor. Open drip proof motors are suitable for indoor use in clean atmospheres. Ventilation openings, i.e. Baldor's super fancy slotted bands, are designed to prevent liquids and solids from entering the machine from an angle 0 to 15 degrees.